guys, what is up? It's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel. I have another what's for dinner for you guys this week where I am sharing some of the meals my blended family of six and I had throughout the week. The first dinner idea of the week that I want to share with you guys is my biscuit pizza casserole or bubble up pizza, which is basically using canned biscuits as your pizza crust. You're also going to need cheese, sauce, and anything you want to put. We kept it simple with some uh, bacon bits and some pepperoni, but it's super, super easy, you guys. But I really want to show you guys my brand new cheese grater. I'm so excited. I have seen Mandy on Mandy in the Making using this on her channel for Ever. And I always say, and it has been on my bucket list of items on Amazon, and I finally broke and got one. Now, I don't believe this is the same brand as Mandy, but guys, this works awesome. I don't have magic links or anything like that, but I will leave a link to Amazon where I did get this if you guys want to check it out in your area. Because let me tell you, I've been struggling with arthritis and a lot of pain from my Crohn's lately, so this has made my life so much easier. So now that our cheese is all ready, I'm going to go ahead and prep our biscuits. What you want to use is a pizza cutter. It is going to make life so much easier, you guys, if you have one of these, because you want to cut each biscuit into four pieces. Then when that's all done, we're going to take these and layer them in a single layer into our nine by 13 pan. Now you can do this in any size pan. You could do this in little pie plates and make individual pizzas for your kids. They could make their own because it's super easy, you guys. It's not like dealing with regular pizza dough. So it's absolutely a kid-friendly dish. Now, you can be as particular or unparticular as you like. I just like making sure that none are on top of each other because I like to cut them up because you can pull them apart. So it's kind of like a pull-apart pizza. Do you know what I mean? So I'm being super Virgo right now and very particular and lining them all up very neatly. And then we're gonna go ahead and lay on some Parmesan cheese, you could add Italian seasoning, that's what I'm adding, or more typical would be oregano, that's kind of like a pizza blend, but do you, whatever you want at this stage, you guys, it's totally up to you. Then I'm gonna go ahead and layer it up with pizza sauce, and then I'm gonna put some of my bacon crumbles, then I'm gonna layer it up with tons and tons of mozzarella cheese, put some pepperonis on top, and bake it in the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. totally random question here. Do you guys put your pepperoni on top of your cheese or on the bottom? Growing up, my mom always put all the toppings on our pizza and then put the cheese on top. But obviously when you go to restaurants and stuff, sometimes the pepperoni's on top. So as an adult, I always put my pepperoni on top, but growing up, it was always under the cheese. The first time we had this pizza, Jamie said to me, it reminded him of Little Caesars. So it's pretty similar to that. It's a thick, fluffy biscuit, obviously, but you guys, it's so good. Something about it reminds me of being a kid at the cafeteria, eating it with some ranch. It was an amazing pizza, you guys. Try it. Okay, so dinner number two is a bit of a trailer or a teaser because I'm not going to show you beef and broccoli this week. That is going in a crock pot video next week, but that is what we had for dinner this week. I want to show you really quickly how I make rice in my Ninja Foodi or in your Instant Pot. Guys, one and a quarter cup water to one cup of rice, two minutes on high with a 10 minute natural release. It's 
perfect every time. We absolutely loved this meal. We had chicken cordon bleu with ranch potatoes in the air fryer. Super basic chicken cordon bleu is basically Swiss cheese and ham stuffed in the middle of a chicken breast and I'm just gonna put some ranch seasoning on some potatoes. Now, this meal was inspired by Tiffany over at Large Family Love. If you guys don't know who she is, you should. You should go check her out. She posts videos every day. She's amazing. Now. I am going to take some panko breadcrumbs, season them with everything but the bagel seasoning, some garlic powder and some pepper and throw that all together. When I make this, I usually change it up every time, but this is what we did this time. Now, typically I slice my chicken down the center and stuff ham and cheese in the middle and bake it in the oven after I've tossed it in some breadcrumbs. But Tiffany took hers and folded hers in half and it just literally, I was like, why am I not making it like this all the time? So I'm going to press the breadcrumb mixture into my chicken breast, which I have filleted or cut in half just to speed up the cooking process. And plus with my littles, they just don't eat that much. So it just makes more sense to make them smaller. I took some Swiss cheese, probably a roughly maybe three quarters of a slice in each one and some ham. Now with the ham, you're gonna see, I like to kind of fold it and have it a bit of a raised edge because it's gonna be sticking out with the chicken. So it's gonna kind of get that crispiness from being in the oven. You'll see what I'm talking about after. So all I'm gonna do is take this, kind of pull it and fold it over the cheese and the ham and we're gonna bake it just like that. You guys, it doesn't get any simpler than this. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> took the two tenderloins from the chicken breast and made two little cordon bleus for my little kids. And don't worry, I wasn't touching any food after that. Leave me a comment down below if you guys use your air fryer every day. I am telling you that Ninja Foodie is used every day in my house and especially for roasted potatoes. We do them for breakfast potatoes. We do them up like this, all different seasonings. So while an air fryer, ideally you don't use oil, I am using like a teaspoon here because I do find it helps crisp them a little bit extra and it's gonna help my seasonings adhere to my potatoes. So you just saw I sprinkled a little bit of pepper on there. I didn't peel them you guys because we are making roasted potatoes. I just think it's better. And I am giving a generous, generous portion of ranch seasoning. Now, if you guys saw one of my grocery hauls, Guys, I paid $32 for that ranch because here in Canada, I cannot find it, but it is worth it. And I'm so excited that I finally have it. I'd say I probably added three tablespoons here, guys. It's hard to see because it kind of dissolves onto the potatoes, but I'm gonna go ahead and roast them at around 390 on my foodie. You could probably do high, that'd be fine. And these actually ended up taking about 21 minutes. I ended up deciding to make some broccoli. It was kind of last minute. This is how I've been really liking doing it lately, you guys. I throw it in a shallow frying pan with a little bit of water, throw a cover on it, steam it. Now I just threw some everything but the bagel on there just to kind of tie it in with the, uh, with the chicken. And then I'm gonna throw on some blobs of Velveeta. Once it's pretty well cooked, throw the lid on, it melts. We scoop it up onto our plates, you guys. This is probably the best broccoli I have ever had in my life. I am addicted to broccoli and Velveeta. There's a new day to get you through your struggles. I will always think of you and me. Yeah, those dogs are never far from me when I'm cooking. You guys know that. Look at that cheese melting, you guys. And plus it saves me putting Velveeta in a cup and melting it in the microwave. Anyway, here you go, chicken cordon bleu. Thank you, Tiffany, large family love. Everybody inhaled this supper. And now 
as if the week wasn't filled with enough comfort food, I closed it off with the Pioneer Woman's Beef Stroganoff. I just have no more words. It's amazing. Now you're gonna see right here, I'm using a marinara sauce because I searched my kitchen and could not find any tomato paste to save my life. So I wanted to make sure that I had some sort of acidic or tomato content. So I just went ahead and substituted for that. I will leave all recipes down below you guys and the link for this recipe as well. There's everything you're gonna need. The first thing I'm doing is getting a deep enough skillet that has a lid and then I can cook the entire dish in. I have melted about two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put one small onion and about three cloves of garlic that I'm mincing fresh here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add about a teaspoon of oil. Anytime I'm melting butter or sauteing, I always like to combine it with a little bit of either olive oil or canola oil, just because it'll help prevent my butter from burning because I'm one of those people who cooks on high heat all the time. I'm just like, boom, 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 get it done and get it out. So garlic and onions are sauteing with some butter and garlic butter and garlic with some butter and oil. I'm gonna throw the ground beef in there and you just wanna cook this all up. Go ahead and throw a little bit of salt and pepper on it. Don't go too crazy on the salt. Turn around and show your face. Let me see parts of you. So this is the point where you would add your tomato paste. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the marinara sauce, like I said. Now we're also gonna season it at this point. So add your paprika, as much Worcestershire sauce as you'd like. We love the taste of it, especially when we're making Salisbury steaks. I'm gonna add the grainy mustard, about a tablespoon or so. I'm gonna add a good amount of pepper. Every time I cook ground beef, I always put tons of pepper. It's just very complimenting with it. So now that that's all stirred up and combined and you have your flavor base ready, go ahead and pour in your egg noodles now I'm using these no yolk uh, no yolk what is going on you guys no yolk uh, egg noodles they're the broad ones, so they look a little bit different but they taste really good I added three and a half cups of beef broth and roughly half to three quarter cup more water you basically just want to make sure there's enough liquid in here that your noodles are gonna cook because you're gonna bring this to a boil and then keep it on a simmer until they're cooked stirring it probably every four minutes or so to make sure it doesn't stick and that you don't overcook them once it's done turn the heat off you should have about this much liquid left and I'm gonna go ahead and stir in my sour cream now this is up to you how much sour cream you want to add we really really like it and it's really what makes it a stroganoff so I added about three quarters of a cup I'm guesstimating here from what I can see maybe half a cup three quarters of a cup but you could add up to half a cup or even more and it's absolutely up to your family reef uh, the pioneer woman actually adds a little bit of cream when she does this as well you guys know I know it sounds funny we use lactose free milk but here I am with a full fat sour cream but for whatever reason it doesn't affect me in the milk does so I'm gonna stir this in with the heat off and then guys we are ready to eat I sprinkle a few freeze-dried chives on here because I didn't have any fresh and let me tell you everybody inhaled this meal have it another week of meals you guys now like I said I had a couple meals this week that I'm sneaking into a crock pot video next week so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on some awesome slow cooker meals all right guys take care and I'll see you in my next video